The niece of the guy in the White House gives some insight into her uncle and her best-selling bombshell of a book, Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. And she joins us live right now. Please welcome Mary Trump. Please, uh, thank you for coming to the show today, Mary. Um, uh, it's great to be here. He... I, I know... You know whose brother, uncle, your uncle Robert, uh, tried to stop this book from being published because of an NDA that you signed, which is also a, a whole other story in the book, after a financial settlement with the family. You say he's always been a, a terrified little boy. Uh, in this case, in these days, what is he so terrified of? Donald? Um, I, yeah. I think he's terrified. And, and again, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's conscious. Uh, but very deep down, mm -hmm. uh, he's terrified of, of being revealed not to be any of the things he claims to be or believes himself to be. You know, the best, the greatest, the smartest, mm -hmm. the, the man who knows more than everybody else, the, the uh, self-made man, and the incredible success. Mary, first of all, it's Joy. Let me say thank you for doing the show. Thank you for your book. You're my hero, or they say Shiro these days, and you're a very brave woman, and uh, I just want to say thank you very much for us. And uh, so let me ask you this question, because we, we rarely hear anything about, about Donald's childhood. So this, your book yeah. is a, revolution, a revelation, and after reading the book, I can understand why you call the Trumps a malignantly, a malignantly dysfunctional family. And yeah. I'm curious, do you see the same dysfunction in the new generation with Junior and Eric and Ivanka and Jared and all that crowd? Yeah, honestly, I, I can't speak to that with any more authority than anybody else. Um, my cousins are much younger than I am. Uh, Donnie's 12 years younger, Ivanka's 16 years younger, et cetera. So I, I didn't even grow up with them. Uh, you know, we overlapped a little bit, but we, we essentially belong to two different generations of grandchildren. Um, Mary, uh, the, the book is, is fantastic, um, but what, what I gleaned from it is that it seems like the Donald Trump that we see was formed by the influence that his father, Fred Trump, had on him. And you call Fred a high-functioning sociopath who really destroyed Donald. How so? Well, it started very early um, uh, when Donald was uh, around two and a half years old, which is an extremely crucial period in a child's development. My grandmother became very ill and for about a year was in and out of the hospital and was essentially unavailable to her children. Um, and, you know, on some level, uh, Donald, for whom she was his main caretaker and source of, of love and human contact, I uh, probably felt abandoned. And, and I mean, it certainly wasn't her fault, but my grandfather, who had no use for children, uh, did not step in and did not provide Donald with the affection and caring and mirroring uh, that he would have needed in order to survive intact my grandmother's absence. Uh, in conjunction with that, we have the fact that my dad, who was seven and a half years older, did not live up to their father's expectations. Fred Trump wanted his oldest son, his namesake, his heir apparent, to be a killer, a tough guy, you know? And my dad was a kind, sensitive man who couldn't handle the criticism or the pressure. Donald learned a very deep lesson from that. And it was essentially, don't be anything like Freddie. If you're anything like Freddie, you're going to get dismantled and it's not going to end well for you. So Donald, took on the persona of the killer, the tough guy, you know, the person who was willing to do anything to win. Because in, in our family, uh, you know, my grandfather treated everything as a zero sum game. If you weren't winning, you were losing. 
Miss Trump, it's Megan. Look, I think I've made it clear to your publishers, I don't like books like this. I don't like family tell-all books, especially when it comes to families with fame and power, because I they're told from the one side, and often the subjects are villainized to the point that I don't actually end up believing the stuff written. There have been books about my family, which are complete and total garbage, told from a skewed mm -hmm. perspective. In the end of the day, you get a really good paycheck out of it, but I don't think it's that legitimate. Um, what do you say to people like me who think this is just a great way for you to get a paycheck right now? Well, you're, you're entirely entitled to your opinion. Um, I think if you read the book, um, you see that I bring to the story my very deep experience within the family. I'm not some stranger writing it. I'm I'm his niece. But you're not close uh, enough with the family bring... where you say you have any relationship with Ivanka. I mean, I think the last thing I understand is that you did end up going to her wedding, but you thought you were only invited as a courtesy. So again, I just know in my family, and my family's clearly nothing like the Trumps, but the people who are close who are close, I certainly have extended family who I don't interact with or certainly only interact with at funerals and things like that. So I, I don't think people like that would know the inner workings of my immediate family dynamic in the way that you present it? Well, I'd love to answer your question. Um, I am not extended family. Donald's my, my dad's younger brother. Uh, and uh, my cousins, Donald's children, are completely irrelevant to the story I was telling, which is, in my view, the foundational narrative about my family and how Donald became the person he is. If I had wanted some measure of revenge, if I had wanted to cash in, as you say, I would have done this 10 years ago when Donald was still a very public figure and uh, it wouldn't have, I would not have been taking the risk that I'm taking. I mean, we've all seen how whistleblowers fare in this administration. So I would much have preferred not to do this, but I felt it was extremely important that the American people have all of the information they need in order to make an informed decision. But if you weren't concerned enough to not go to the White House what? and have dinner with him. I mean, this, I think this is the part I don't understand. Your brother says it's bad. You went to the White House and had dinner with him while he was president on the taxpayer dime. You have a complicated relationship with him and this family that I don't understand. And I understand now you're saying it's really important now and that's all well and good. But I do think if you were probably close to that family, you would probably know your cousins, Don Jr. and Ivanka, on a level that you clearly don't. I'm not entirely sure why you're so focused on my cousins, who, again, are so much younger than I am. Um, so I guess what I would say, first of all, I, I did not go to the White House on the tax paradigm. That's a quite absurd thing to say. But families are extremely complicated. Uh, you know, the administration was at that point less than four months old. Um, I was going there for my aunt's birthdays, uh, you know, not to uh, take advantage of Donald's position. And I think to focus on these things is to take away from the actually uh, important things I write about in the book. 